Hey there YouTube, AJ here. And uh, today I'm gonna to be working on my hot rod again. And today I'm gonna to be working on converting my hub drum assemblies, which are one piece, into a slip over design where the hub is separate from the actual drum. And that way you can take the drum on and off without taking off the hub and get to the brakes and adjust and uh, do work on the brakes. So why do I want to do that? It's mainly for convenience. So how are we going to be doing that? Well, first thing we have to do is separate the actual hub from the drum. These are my rear hubs that I want to keep and reuse. And they are attached one piece back here. And to do that, we have to remove these um, wheel studs. The old Ford wheel studs are different than today's modern wheel studs, and that's where the whole problem begins. You can't just start wailing on these with a hammer or put them in a press and try to press them out because chances are you'll damage the drum and or the hub. And in my case, these drums that my rear hubs are on are too far gone to use, so I don't I won't be reusing these. However, these drums, I have a pair that have front hubs on them, and the drums are good, but the uh, I won't need the front hub, so I want to use this drum on this hub. Now, I could do that without converting to a slipover design, but what's really the point since I got to do that much work already? So, I could take and do the work to remove these properly do the work to remove these properly, put these on, and, and I could get the old style wheel studs. However, that's where the problem begins. The old style wheels, wheel studs are different than what you may know as modern studs. Typical modern studs now are pressed into the hub and these knurls hold it from spinning. And that's it. They're actually just a force fit that holds the wheel stud in place and nothing else. I don't have an actual separated uh, old Ford swedged, and that's the real word, swedge style wheel stud. I'll put a picture up over here, and if you look at this wheel stud, you can see there's there's no knurls on the shoulder, and the shoulder, it's hard to tell in the picture, but the shoulder is taller, so that shoulder would actually be a little proud of the surface of the drum and they then would take that shoulder, they put the whole assembly into a press, and they basically flatten out that shoulder and squish it down, and that is what holds the wheel stud in. And what keeps it from spinning is on the back end of the stud, there's a flat spot that rides against the hub, and that keeps it from turning. Now it's a good solid design, it works well, until you break one. And then you have to remove it and replace it. And there's not really a lot of brake shops anymore that will replace these because what they have to do is they put that, that shoulder through everything and then you have to have a 20 ton press and a special tool to actually swedge it into the, the drum. And that's where the problem comes in and why, and that is why you can't just take a hammer and wail these things out because that swedge will damage the drum and you can probably, you'll probably end up warping the hub as well. So what I have to do is undo these the proper way by cutting out that swedge on all these studs, which for me, since I've got two sets, I've got five times, oh, this one's missing, so that saves me one work. I don't, I, so I got five times four is 20 minus this one here, it's already missing. So I got 19 of these to cut out the swedge and then properly press out the stud without damaging the hub. So let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is cut the swedges on these wheel lug studs uh, so we can press them out without doing as, too much damage to the drum and or um, hub. So to do that, they actually make a swedge cutting tool, but it's pretty expensive and I didn't want to buy it. So 
alternative method here is I'm using a 5 8 inch hole saw that just barely fits around the wheel stud which is a half inch and we're going to cut down into this wedge and from what I've read it needs to be a sixteenth to an eighth inch cut deep in order to remove enough material to press this out so that's where we're at so I've never done this before but you know we're gonna give it a shot and see how it goes gonna hit it with a little bit of cutting oil here whoa try not to get too much and uh, let's see how this goes since this is the first one I'm not trying to save these drums because they're too big so I can kind of experiment with my how depth of my cut uh, looks like I've got about a sixteenth right there right now so let's give it another swarf here and see what we got. I don't feel that's cut deep enough yet so we're gonna give it another go. I'm bottoming out on my spindle travel or I feel like it should go further. I feel like I've got a good 16th cutaway. That's a nice solid 16th, but it's I wish I had a way to know exactly how far, like you could see a parting line or something else. I don't know. I think we'll give it one more shot and then move on to the next one. bottom of my travel I don't know if I'm gonna have enough depth I'm gonna might need to raise this up just a smidge I don't know what do you think do we have it cut deep enough or not I feel like I need to shim my stack up just a little bit so I can get just a little more depth on my cut all right I didn't want to shim this thing too much because I this I like having it being at the end of my travel because it kind of helps me prevent from overcutting and um, I just added a piece of thick cardboard to the stack so hopefully we'll get right to where we need to be now <laughs> took out some ships that time so let's see all right we're not at an eighth we are more than a solid 16th though 
Uh, I think we'll give it just a little more and then we'll call it. Sixteenth, not quite an eighth. I think that's what we're going to shoot for on all of them before we go to press these up. So you can see here where I've cut down around each stud, and. Uh, and it's a little more than a sixteenth, so hopefully I've cut enough. Um, so I think now what we're going to try to do is um, put these on the press and press these out. But before we do that, if you look at the back of the hub assembly, we need to support the hub when we're pressing these out. So. If you look at it, it's not a smooth, flat surface here to put, like, typically, like a big socket or something around this. So, before we can actually start pressing those out, I got to make a tool that kind of fits in here to hold the hub beneath where I'll be pressing. So, the first thing we need to do is find out how deep this thing is. Four and a quarter, a little more than that. Four and three eighths. All right. So first thing we gotta do is cut something about four and three eighths inch long. Okay, so I screwed up on my measurement. When I laid that ruler across here, I measured my depth to the top of the ruler and forgot to take off my inch for the thickness of the ruler. So this is an inch too long. Okay, so what I've done here is just cut off this piece of um, gas pipe. I just used this coupling. This coupling's welded to the rest of the pipe, so it's like it's not coming off. So I might as well just use this section and get rid of it. Just what I've done is cut it to the length I need to fit between the hub and the bottom of the drum, and then I contoured the edge of this to match the contour of the hub, so it gives a nice solid place to sit on, and that's it. Let's go see if we can press these studs up. All right, so here we are at the press. We've got our stud back here. Unfortunately, my press isn't very big, so it's not like I can uh, sit the whole um, drum on my plate. I gotta kind of support it as I go. I'm positioning the uh, piece of pipe that I cut to support the back side of the drum. All right. Let's see how we do. Okay. See something moving. That's good, I think. Hey, there's one. And there is our swedge stud. All right, let's see if we can get the rest out. Okay, so we've got our removed studs here. Four full-size ones, one broken one. And uh, so we got all of those out of the hub. Now, 
we have to separate the hub from the drum. And I really don't know how much pressure that's gonna take. I don't know if I should just put it in my press and try to press it out, or if I should give it a couple of whacks with a hammer and see what happens. Something's telling me I'm gonna need the press. You know what? This is gonna, probably going to be a futile effort, but I'm going to try to hit it with a dead blow hammer a few times just to see if it pops through. Hey, it did work. <laughs> So now we have our separated hub. Uh, looks like they oiled the surface or put some kind of anti-seize on the surface to keep them from rusting together permanently. So thank you for the assembler. And uh, it appears to be straight and not bent. So that's good. So great. So we got our process down to remove the hub. So I'm gonna go remove the hubs from the other um, rear drum and the two front drums and um, I won't show you that unless I come across some kind of issue I feel is important and so if there were no issues time jump now to everything being disassembled to this point all right here we go got everything separated I must say my process worked fairly well uh, the second rear hub came off pretty much just like the first one no problems there these are the rears. This is the rear hub and the rear drums that I had. And these are the studs that came out of them. And then the fronts, only one small issue. When I got to press out the studs, I had to modify my tool a little bit. I put a, a groove in it here because uh, the front hubs have a, a web coming down off the center part. And to make it sit flat and support it better, I had to cut that groove in there to go over that web. And then that was it. Other than that, they pretty much came out just like a front. I will say the studs took a little more uh, effort to get them out. If you look at the studs from the front, they're a little more rusty than the rears. So these did uh, take more effort to get them pressed out. And the hubs too, to see how much more rust is on them, they took a lot more effort to get out of the center. I didn't have to resort to pressing them out. I did beat them out with the dead blow hammer. However, the edges of the uh, hub center there tore up my dead blow hammer. So that's pretty much useless now. Not completely useless, but you know, it's gonna mar up surfaces now. So anyway, got that done. So we're gonna, we don't need these. We're getting rid of these. We don't need these. We're not going to be using these because, as I said, they're out of spec. They're not going to work for us. We're going to these. I believe I can turn down and use yet. So we're going to use these for now, at least, with these rear hubs. Now, the next part of this, we need to get these hubs ready to use these type of studs. We look at these two studs. First thing you notice is the head on this one is not round. It's got a flat spot. And the reason for that is it sits against this edge of the hub there and holds it and keeps it from spinning. These older style studs, they relied on the swedge to hold everything together. And when you go to cut tighten your lug nuts down onto the uh, stud, this flat against that hub edge keeps this from spinning so you can tighten it down. If that was round, uh, the swedge alone probably wouldn't hold it from spinning. So that's why that that design So one of the first things I got to do is I gotta take my new studs and I have to grind a flat into one side of them So they will sit against that and I don't have to do that for it to hold from spinning because the knurls will hold it from spinning I have to do that in order for it to fit in to the new hub because if it's not flat there, it won't go all the way flat to this surface. So that's why we're gonna do that. We're gonna grind that flat. And then the other thing, we have to drill this hole 
just big enough for a press fit for that knurled edge there. I will put a part number um, for the wheel studs up on the screen here um, that I'm using and I'm going to be drilling these holes out to 39 60 fourths with the brand new 39 60 fourths drill bit I had to buy just for this because I didn't have one. If I drill it out to that size 39 60 fourths put a flat spot on here so it'll go up flat against the edge of the hub I will be able to press these in and they will hold themselves and um, not spin when you go to tighten down your lug nuts. And then once that is done, the these will all be sticking up through the hub and the brake drum itself will just go over top of those wheel studs. And you'll be able to take this off separately from the hub and get access to your um, brakes and such. Now, is the old design really that bad? Not really, because, you know, honestly, if you were redoing your brakes back then, you'd probably want to pull that hub anyway and re-grease and check your bearing that's in here. Um, I've got packed full of plastic bags right now, so just to keep crud out of it while I'm working, I will take this bearing out, clean it, and re-grease it before I install it, but for now, you know, we're just working on it as is. So that's where we're at. I have to make a jig to hold these and so I can drill them all out and I have to grind flat spots in all of these. flat spot on the heads of all my uh, wheel studs which should keep them from spinning I, um, in my hub when you go to tighten down the lug nuts so we're good there um, where we're at now is we've got to drill out these holes in the hub flange to where this can press in right now they're too small they need to be drilled out a little bit and um, I've taken and built up a jig to hold my hub square to the drill bit. And uh, yeah, so now we're just gonna try to drill these and hopefully um, everything will work out for the good. First, let's... Uh, I know that ideally I would take these to a machine shop and have them done, but I'm trying to do everything on myself. Uh, just kind of proving that I can do it. All right, what I forgot to do was put some cutting oil. So we got that one drilled, seemed to drill pretty well. So um, we're gonna go ahead and do the others, but I'm, I'm gonna put some cutting oil before I go any further. So now we got our holes in, got our flat spots ground on all of our heads of our wheel studs. It's time to install these. Now, some people install these by basically uh, putting a bunch of washers on here, or putting them through, then putting a bunch of washers on here, and then taking the uh, lug nut on the flat side and tighten it down and just pulling them in. Uh, I have a press, so I'm tempted to use my press. I'm worried about getting them in square though. 
Um, so I'm not really sure which way I'm going to do it yet. Let's, I'm trying. I'm going to think about that for a second. So I'm not sure if I try to use the washer method to pull them in. Uh, I'm not sure if I can tighten this down without these spinning. That's going to be hard to get them started. Maybe I could tap them in a little bit to get them started to where they would hold themselves. Uh, I'm not sure. But I think I'd like to try to press them in, but to do that, I got to get something the perfect distance, the same exact measurement from here to the face that the wheel studs can slip into. And they have to be exactly the same in order to hold everything square. Okay, so I've got a 916 deep well socket on top of a, I don't know, it's probably not quite maybe one eighth to three sixteenth inch of steel uh, a little just just a scrap and that's got my my um, stud in here square to the flange I put my flat side to the ed this lip of the flange and now let's cross our fingers that everything goes as planned I think I might have to push it in just to where the rams above this flange here uh, I don't think I'm gonna build it well I don't know it depends on how far the head sticks up above this we'll see I might have to do two passes here well it is entering the flange It's in there. We have our stud. We have our flat spot here against this so it won't spin. It's in there nice and solid. Now we just need to do that same thing nine more times. Okay, we have our hubs converted to press in studs. They're all pressed in, uh, flat side against this lip to hold them from spinning. The knurled shaft will hold it into the hub nice and solid. Everything's done here. And now it's the critical point. Did it work? So, let's try it out. go we have a 1946 rear hub adapted to modern slip over style drums now guess maybe we should check the other one That's what we got. So everything seems to fit nice. I would say we have succeeded. So now I've got drums that I can take on and off. I can just find more old drums. I could buy. They actually make newer versions of these. Uh, they're not cheap, but so if I find those, I might end up having to buy those. I am going to take this set now that I know that my uh, theory and everything works. I'm going to take this set and, and uh, go try to have them turned. And then uh, next step is to put the hubs onto my axle, start rebuilding my brakes, get my brakes rebuilt onto there, and then put the drums over it. And then my axle will be done and ready to put the wheels on and sit the back end down on the ground. 
hope you found that interesting. Maybe not, maybe so. Um, I don't know who all out there may or may not want to do this type of thing, but at least now you know it can be done. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, if you can, you know, subscribe to the channel. That helps. Other than that, we'll be um, building the brakes next time. So until then, later, YouTube.